Hello everybody, my name is Milo and welcome back again to my custom villager houses tutorial series where we are building a house for each of the Minecraft villager professions. So if you don't want to miss out on the rest of these builds that we have left to do, please feel free to subscribe. All of these are from my survival series where we are making ourselves a custom village and the original concept of this series came from Mythical Sausage. Both of my playlists and his are going to be down in the description for you to check out if you would like to. So far we have done the cleric, weaponsmith, fisherman, cartographer, shepherd, butcher and leather worker houses but today we are building a home for the armourer. In this double chest are all of the items we need to complete this build. So we have all of our spruce and oak variants along the top here, a little bit of brick and white terracotta, and then we have a bunch of stone brick and cobblestone. We're going to be mixing these two together quite a bit and doing some texturing, so I've kind of just split the resources up between them. We also have a little bit of granite and polished granite, which mine is textured slightly differently, but it should still look basically the same for you. So go ahead and grab them as well. And then we just have our miscellaneous items at the bottom here, which of course you're going to need five flowers to go inside of your flower pots and also some armor to go on these armor stands. The size of this house is roughly 14 by 11 blocks, so just make sure you got enough room before we start building here, which we can straight away do with our strip spruce logs as we have done with every video so far this series. It's always the first step adding in the pillars, but we can place the first one here and bring that up by three more logs for a total of four. And then just to the right, we can leave one, two, three, and four spaces and place another pillar here. Same amount as the one before. Swinging around to the left hand side here, we can leave a gap of one two three four and five blocks this time and have another pillar and then the final one can just be lined up with the two pillars either side of it so we should have something like this at the moment now we can start to outline the shape of the roof. So we're just going to face the front of the house here and as a reference point the doorway is going to be going somewhere around here in that spot just so you guys know which way we're facing and all of that but we're going to grab our spruce stairs and have an upside down one on both of those top pillar blocks where in front we can have ourselves a spruce slab with two stairs in the center. So this is the front. We're going to do a very similar thing around the back once again with two upside down stairs but this time we're going to have four slabs and without the upside down stairs in the center. So that's how the back should be looking. We can then come around to what is the left hand side of the building over here and we're going to have a stair facing regularly like that with an upside down one coming off the back. We'll do the same over here as well and just with another stair on top of both of those blocks. We'll leave this open for now and come back to it in just a second but we'll do a similar thing over on the right hand side so another two stairs on the back of those two upside down stairs but instead of placing an upside down one like that we're actually going to place a full spruce plank and once again just have another spruce stair on top. I've just grabbed some temporary blocks for this next step to make it slightly easier because we need to place some horizontal logs going across so we'll have our temporary block there one block diagonally away from that stair where we can then place our strip spruce logs horizontally as I said reaching all the way over to this stair here so it's in line with the rest of the roof. We can go ahead and get rid of that concrete block or whatever you happen to be using and then we'll just do the same for the opposite side as well and go ahead and get rid of our temporary blocks. Then we can have a spruce stair facing inwards on both of those end blocks right there. Spruce trapdoor just in front with a spruce slab below. Upside down stair with a regular stair on top. So that's how one of the signs should be looking. The other one is virtually the same. Two stairs on top with two spruce trapdoors coming inwards. Two slabs once again and then we'll have an upside down stair and a regular one. So this is virtually the same as I said with the exception of these spruce planks. Off the back of this middle stair here we can have another line of horizontal strip spruce logs going all the way across where we can then have a trap door on the outer blocks followed by a spruce stair facing outwards like that with two slabs in the middle. So we have something that looks like this and then we can move over to our oak blocks. On top of these two pillars here we'll have ourselves an oak slab followed by two oak stairs with two more slabs in the center. We'll do the same around the back as well. And then for the next section up here, we're going to have one, two, three, four stairs just on that top section right there with the rest of these becoming oak slabs. And then once again, we'll do it around the back. And just like that, the roof for the house itself is all done. 
Now we can add in the roof for the outside working area where the armorer will be doing all of his forging of armor. So what we can do is grab our spruce slabs and place one, two on the bottom part of this full spruce plank, just like that, where we can have a spruce trap door underneath and then one just in front. So it's something that looks like this. Just make sure the trap door isn't there and it's actually up by a couple of pixels, as you can see. So we'll do the same round here, two trap doors just like that. Spruce slab underneath that outer trap door and then just one block inwards we're going to have one two three strip spruce logs on both of those sides like that where we can then have a spruce slab just in front of them on the same level as this slab right here and basically do a similar thing so spruce trap door in front and on top and same with this side with a line of slabs going all the way across. The roof here is going to be made out of stone brick and cobblestone, but just for simplicity sakes of the tutorial, I'm only going to be using the stone bricks and adding in the texture once we're done. But we can go ahead and place a slab on top of the pillar blocks here with a cracked stone brick coming off the back of it. These are actually the only two full blocks in this entire roof section, hence why I'm utilizing the cracked variant. But we can have an upside down stair coming off the back just like that so that it looks like a full block from the outside here. We can then go ahead and have another slab coming inwards and upwards by half a block right there. Leave this block open for now. We'll place a chimney there once we're all done with this part. And then we're just going to place six more slabs going across the top like that. So our roof should be looking like this. And then we can quickly hop down and grab our wall blocks and have two of those coming out from each of the pillar blocks here on either side. So face this one, two coming out face this one, two coming out and they should connect in the middle just like that. And then we can go ahead and grab our cobblestone and mix a little bit of that in. So you have something that looks a bit like this. Of course, don't forget the walls down the bottom here as well. But after you got that done, we can grab our brick blocks and have one block here with another one just on top where we can then place our campfire and surround that with some spruce trap doors as a little bit of a miniature chimney to our forge, which we're now going to build. So we're going to bring it down by an extra brick block and then just in front of it here. So not underneath it directly, one block out. We're going to have a full block there with a stair on top and then two either side like that. We can then step inside and have an upside down stair here with a full block either side of it just like that. Stair in front and then two stairs facing outwards on both of the two sides like that. So this is what the forge looks like from the front and this is how it looks like from the back round the outside and then we can just head back inside again and actually dig away this bottom block here and place a campfire with a blast furnace on top. This is the armorer's workstation so obviously that needs to be included into the build if you're looking to actually place a villager inside of here and we've just got the campfire underneath so we get some of those smoke particles. Next up, grab your white terracotta and place four blocks next to these two pillars on both of the two sides like that with a line of three going across the top. So we then end up with this three by three hole which we can then turn into an entrance way of sorts where we can have an upside down spruce stair in each of those corner blocks Spruce trap door in the middle at the very top with two either side folded downwards so we end up with something that looks like this. We can then move forward and grab our spruce fences and have two here next to those pillar blocks and then turn 180 degrees and do the same for those two as well. So all of your walls should be pointy like this and not be flat like that one is right there. So once you've got all of that done, we can then grab our stone brick slabs and cobblestone slabs and we just want to place one underneath that pillar block right there, of course switching these out as we do it. And then we'll just have three going along that spot right there and then underneath all of these we'll place the stone bricks under the stone bricks and the cobble underneath the cobble just to smooth out the ceiling a little bit. As for the front of the house here, we're going to grab our white terracotta again and have a line of four across the top with another one just below it. Next up, grab your spruce door and we're going to place it next to the pillar block here so it opens up just like that where we can then have white terracotta, just one here with two next to that pillar and this can become a glass pane. We can then grab our brick walls and place one here either side of the door with an oak fence on top followed by three campfires which we can then extinguish with our shovel so it looks like that. And then just beneath the window we can have ourselves an upside down oak stair, oak slab just above it, spruce trap door to the right with a flower pot with something inside in front of the window. 
As for the left hand side of the build we can go ahead and fill all of this in with white terracotta once again and then come round to the front and punch out a couple of blocks for our windows. Two can go there and another two with one block in between. Of course place your glass panes like that with a upside down spruce stair underneath both of those with a spruce slab in the centre. We can then have a brick wall either side of those with one, two, three oak fences until we reach this top block right here. Same again on this side as well. An oak fence gate can go in front of this window and can be opened up on both of the sides with a spruce trap door in front just like that. And then we can get ourselves some spruce fences and place one here with a lantern hanging down from below with a flower pot in front of the two windows with of course something to go inside. So the left hand side should be looking like this. The final thing to do with the outside of the build is come round to the back of the house here and just to the left of this right hand pillar we're going to have four white terracotta blocks, one inwards at the bottom and the top with two glass panes right here, a line going all the way across to kind of close that in and make ourselves a proper window, an oak stair can go here with an oak trap door above it and then two white terracotta blocks. So we should have something like this where we can then place an oak slab just above the trap door here. Two spruce trap doors next to the window where we can then have a scaffolding and a lantern just on top like that. And as I said that is going to be the exterior for this build all done. We're now ready to head inside and start work there. First things first we're going to go ahead and get rid of all of these grass blocks and replace them with our polished granite and regular granite. Something you can do is also just break a couple of the grass blocks, not all of them, but just a few underneath the walls themselves. And as you just saw there, we're basically just mixing these two blocks together to create a nice textured floor. And of course, don't forget to place a block in front of the campfire itself and not forget like I just did there. But once we got our floor in place, we can grab three white terracotta blocks and just place them along the top like that. Following, we can grab some oak slabs and have four of them across each side to complete the look of our ceiling, where just to add in a couple of extra supports, we can add four oak fence gates on either side and open them all up. Kind of looks like something holding up these beams. And then the final thing we can do for this clip is to place a spruce trap door on the bottom part of this white terracotta. So not here. We want to be highlighting this block and place it down there with a spruce fence below, followed by a lantern. In this corner here, just as if we walk through the front door, we're going to place down our bed right there and have two spruce trap doors folded upward against it just to kind of close our villager in when they go to sleep. We can then have an upside down oak stair just beside this oak stair right here, a chest on top, a scaffolding in the corner with a flower pot with something inside, just like that to complete this little area right here, nicely interiorly decorated. I don't think interiorly is a word, but it is now. Anyway, we shall continue on. <laughs> We're going to have an upside down spruce stair just beneath this window with again another flower pot here. Either side of this upside down stair we can go ahead and have ourselves a diagonal armor stand so it's facing inwards ever so slightly right there and then the other side of this wall will have a smooth stone slab with once again another armor stand and we can go ahead and chuck some armor on all of these guys. This one here we're not actually going to put the helmet on top, we're instead going to place another armor stand over in this corner, but for that we need to do some piston trickery, so it's not too complicated, don't worry, don't lose heart <laughs> if I said piston and it scared you away, don't worry I'm scared of redstone too, but we're just going to break away this block here and place down one, two, three, four snow layers or a daylight detector, whichever one you have access to may be easier depending on where you are in your survival world, but go ahead and place each either of those two there with an armor stand on top just like that so you can see it's kind of sunk down half a block like that. We can then go ahead and place our crafting bench on that block there and get rid of these two ceiling blocks temporarily. A piston can go here upside down so that we can then push the crafting bench down a block and then just go ahead and place a temp block there and do it again so that we eventually push the crafting bench all the way down into this armor stand where then we can go ahead and put the helmet on top so it looks like it's in the process of being crafted up ready to complete the set on the full armor stand over here and then of course go ahead and break the lever and complete your ceiling once again and repair what you've broken. 
I've only just realized there are actually some spawning spots here on these four spaces. So if you don't want mobs spawning in here, there's two things you can do to light this place up. First of all, you could replace this full block for a stair just like that. You'll see the campfire shining through, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Maybe just get rid of these blocks right here and replace them with bricks if you want to be real finicky about it, but maybe you don't like the look of that so much. All you could simply do is place a chain block here with a lantern hanging down, and as you can see, that lights these blocks up nicely so you don't have to worry about mob spawning, which you may be cautious about if you're actually looking to get a villager inside of this place. Now, I've mentioned this a couple of times before in this mini series throughout a couple of the other builds. But if you actually want to get a villager trapped inside of here so they kind of stay in and are safe from all of the outside elements, all you have to do is place a spruce trap door on the top part and the bottom part of this door here and fold them upwards and then you can go ahead, spawn in your villager or move him over somehow. He becomes an armor like you can see and he's probably going to demonstrate in a second. Yeah, as you can see, he's trying to get out but he's got no possible way. But as you can see, you can climb out of that door nicely just by pressing shift. And that, everybody, is going to do it for this tutorial. I really hope it did help you out if you were looking to build a house for your armor. Thank you ever so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.